and welcome to the Scene Weekly podcast, where we hearken back to our college debate days and pick two movies of the same theme to take on the murderers of the world with L and Kira battling at every angle. This week's episode is focused on Japanese anime cult classic Death Note, parts one and two, as we attempt something new and maybe for for the first and last time called a premiere pilgrimage where i'm going to take steven's weary soul through the two new movies as a guide death note one and two please come join jonathan and steven for another week of desirably less plot chatter and hopefully more film banter we are seen weekly steven and welcome to our world or we my are, world that is yeah i'm in your world guide. this week i am definitely in your world, um, and yeah, it's it's uh, it's an interesting world to be uh, be living in. I- I'm still alive. Granted, you don't have like a, a notebook with my name mm. written in it. Maybe Hopefully. I do. I, I, <laughs> I do you did you know before you know whenever you first started watching these movies anything about? I guess let's start with anime. How, how's your experience with anime? Anime is uh, non porn not- related. <laughs> Okay, we can put that on the, the, the back catalog. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I don't have that much history with anime, to be honest. I remember watching mm. Sailor Moon as a kid when I lived in Hawaii. And that was like my entry point and exit point. Like that I didn't have any kind of uh, other inclination to get into. And, and I'm sad to say or, or, or whatever, but like even like the big big dogs like uh, Akira and, and things like that, like I... I I never I never was into it, and so uh, yeah. especially yeah, you know, when you suggested this movie or the, this series of of films, I had no idea it was based on a magna, uh, man- manga manga, and uh, an anime series as well. Like I had no idea I was going into it uh, blindly. Are you still blind? Can, a little, or can you or, or can you see? <laughs> It's a little blurry, to be honest. But yeah. what about what about you? Are you a big uh, you big anime kind of guy? Nope, no, I never. I first of all, I watched these movies a long time ago, so it's nice to see them, rewatch them. But it's maybe my third, fourth time watching them. They um, this would be, I guess, to some extent, a guilty pleasure of mine, <laughs> where I uh, like completely love these movies. And there's a third, by the way. It's a spinoff of L. That uh, yeah, is yeah. is also, in my view, terrific. Terrific in the sense of um, they're just so fun and absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. There's no other movie really that really comprises this type of or com- like is almost so seemingly predictable at every angle, and they like regurgitate exactly pretty much what what happens after it happens. Um, but then you're like so. I don't know. For me, I was like, I want to. I I know what's going to happen, but I want to see it happen. This is lovely, and make the destruction known. There's not many movies that do it like this. But uh, to answer your question, I I've never been in, big into anime, even after watching these. I never was a Dragon Ball Z, for example. Like I wouldn't even go that far. I never. I bought Death Note the whole series, and I watched the first episode, and I'm like, I guess people would like this but i I, i'm done i'm basically done i was like i don't want to watch the rest (laughs) kind of thing i've seen this enough but yeah yeah and this uh this this series of death note it it kind of keeps lingering on uh throughout the years there was a musical version in 2015 there was uh the netflix uh movie in 2017 that was more of like a final destination kind of vibe to it uh, and they're going to make another series on Netflix. I, from what I hear, uh, somebody picked it up, and they're going to they're going to run with it again. So this, I mean, there's a there's a lot. Obviously, there's there's a lot of material there, and it's a cool concept. Um, I, and yeah, the, these uh, I I got through the movies, got through them. I love them. I love them so much. Like honestly, they're like eighty percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but they're not they're not well shot. They're predictable, but they're just so fun loving. And the whole reason for The choice of the premiere pilgrimage is for one of us to be lazy, more or less. Yeah. I mean, you still have to go and watch the movies. Um, But this is a lead up to October and Halloween to some extent. But anyway, 
why don't we get into it? I'll, we'll be talking for probably 35 minutes about both of these movies and uh, be done with it so we can get some time back to our lives. But have you ever, though, wanted to like do a top 10 of anime and actually just pile in to see what it's worth, to see what it's like? Yeah, I would have to look at like the the the, the canon, the, like the list of what people say is the top tier because I'm not, I don't really, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I would be a rube in that regard. Um, but yeah, I, I could, I could try and get into it. I could dip my toe in the anime waters and, and see, I feel like, you know, with, uh, with our, our foray into like studio, uh, Ghibli, uh, yeah. it's, you kind of have a little bit of that. Um, but like, this is, um, from what I've kind of seen, this is like full, full, full anime, you know, in live action form. No, I, I mean, if. If you watched the first episode, did you watch the 2017 movie? I don't know if you had time. Probably not. I watched 10 minutes of it and I just, I had to turn it off. I was like, this is actually <laughs> ruining the taste of what I previously watched. Um, and I didn't think that was possible, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fair to say you really enjoyed this week. I felt like I lost a bet. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love these movies. They're so good. But uh, in like a... Um, not like the longest yard kind of way where, you know, they're just uh, they're the level of cheese is so high, but I still love them. I don't know. It's a weird thing. And I do not like anime. I don't I can't get behind it. I, um, I just don't enjoy it. Yeah. Growing up, my 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 sister would watch these uh, these soap operas and I I would tune in and kind of watch it with her every now and then and kind of follow the storyline and plot. And like when I was watching yeah. these, I was like, this feels like a Japanese soap opera. Like, oh, it is for sure. It is, uh, but if you've ever seen like Korean dramas, they're very similar. Like things are well laid out, but for L and and Kira, or aka Light, um, there's an actual chess match going on, Liter- yes. literally, and yeah. figuratively. Even even the 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 well we can get into it later but like yeah the, the filmmaker had made some choices even with like the floor in the in the last scene of the room looked yeah. like a like a chess chess piece but yeah um it's not to say that I and I can we can get into like you know whether liking or loving it like I was intrigued by it I was definitely like following along and also trying to like pile up all the all the rules that were going into the 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 movie or the the actual death note. Um, and trying to figure that out. But yeah, I kind of saw where it was going, but there were some twists and turns. And I mean, I, I'm here. This is this is me laying myself before you and saying, Jonathan, these are your movies. I watch them. I want you to guide me through them. And let me know, let the, me know w- <laughs> what I missed or w- what's going on. <laughs> there's not much you probably missed. <laughs> In terms of a guide, there's not there's not a whole lot uh, to guide you through. I, I frankly wanted to... Uh, to take a break myself, um, I feel like if you you can kind of pick up, you can put these movies on the background and pick up and be like, yeah, that, this probably happened. I could probably guess what happened in the last 30 minutes. You know, like this probably happened. And you get to the end, and you're like, yeah, that did happen. Um, but let's get to it. Death Note 1 and 2. I think number 2 actually has a name to itself. Uh, the Last Name, which yeah, I believe last it's, name, it's yeah. called. Yeah, so they're actually fairly lengthy movies, but uh, 140 minutes for the runtime for the first. Um, Shizuki Kaneko, he actually directed both 2006, 2007, um, and I'll actually go through the backgrounds of both. And not rated, strangely. Uh, I, I feel like I've said this way too often. Why are movies rated sometimes? Can you answer that? Why are they not rated? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Uh, I mean, I think this falls out of the uh, the, the guidelines because it's a foreign release, and I don't know if it it probably never got like a it, well, I'm sure it never got a wide release in, in stateside. So maybe they don't have to. I don't know. The MPAA guidelines don't really apply hmm. to to Japan. I want some more definitives besides maybe's, but yeah, it's a mystery. I did zero th- research going into this, John. You told me <laughs> no research. Just no, watch. But- general knowledge of the industry you know as somebody who's worked in it before i would figure that a film major would know this as a historical buff possibly i don't know but it appears not um i don't know what to call this this is as a mystery and a thriller i'd call it that something something along those lines i was going into thinking it was a horror movie um 
Well, yeah, kind of. And it, wa- say- it wasn't. Yeah. Oh, you did you watch the trailers? You that's the first thing you sent, and there was. Uh, mm. I remember, like, I was at work and I was trying to watch the trailers, and I was like, "What? This yeah. is all in Japanese. Like, there's not even like subtitles." And you're like, "You can understand it. You can understand what's going on." I'm like, "Oh, yeah. okay. Let me like sit down and actually like follow what's going on here." Um, well, I didn't ask you to watch it while you were working. First I, of all, yeah, I, 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 it's I, not I, my fault. That was misguided there. But um, I, yeah, once I actually sat down and followed what was going on, I. I, I, I kind of got the gist of of the the storyline, uh, and yeah, I, I thought it was going to be much darker and um, more sinister. But yeah, it was more of a mystery, uh, and much darker, uh, Did, like more murders. <laughs> I mean, come on, Grant, the murders are like this. Oh, you wanted them to die bad, like in a in like a horrific way. Yeah, like like Final Destination or, or something like that. Like, you oh, know, got the it. Head gets ripped off. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, no, I think that they would ha- it would probably have a rating then. But yeah, they they uh, seventy eight percent. I think eighty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, the budgets are similar twenty million, um, thirty one in the box office for the first, and about fifty for the the second. Um, and I I have to say I'll go into the synopsis I guess. But the film primarily centers on a Tokyo college student. His name is Light, and he uh, also nicknamed Kiro, who ends up finding the death note uh the original death note i should say but he's a college student who attempts to change the world of course into a utopian society without crime by committing a worldwide massacre of criminals that's how that's how we always start off right and everyone yeah. that has the opportunity i just want to kill the criminals the bad guys and then you just start murking everybody basically um and he, ha- he finds this notebook randomly on uh you know in the the anime itself he finds it strangely uh which is there's like a million YouTube channels that actually go over the issue that they have with the original finding of the book. They say it landed face down, but when he picks it up, it's face up. And there's like t- all of these YouTube people are okay. like having issue with that. I was like, it doesn't show what happened in the time period. Like maybe somebody kicked it. Like, I don't know. Uh, a lot of people. Continuity like, errors. Like, Everybody's got continuity could... errors. No, no. The people are like, how dare they? Like, how would they overlook this with uh, the entire studio overlook this? And I was like, I, don't, I guess I'm not this into it. But anyway, he finds a notebook that happens to be supernatural. Comes with a, a friend once you pick it up called Ryuk. And uh, basically, anytime you write somebody's name into this this notebook, that person will die of a heart attack. And in the way that um, you know, it seems like it was an enjoyable heartache for yourself. Um, but then ultimately, the the murders start happening and the killings start happening far more frequent, and law enforcement gets involved. Um, and it just so happens to be the head lead detective is Squeeze On. <laughs> By the way, he is great name, great name. No, that's not that's not his name. That's this is the Squeeze On guy from Master Chef. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. 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 Squeeze on. That's him. In real life, man. It's amazing. I, uh, he's, See? Uh, the acting just went up a notch for me. So he, can, <laughs> he can do both roles and just, wow. His voice is just a a nice warm blanket on a winter's day. Like, I would love for him to just say sweet nothings to me if... Uh, if I were close to him, but yes, his father is the one now prosecuting and trying to find his son, uh, who he doesn't know is is the son until much later into these. That's the premise for both movies. Basically, the second movie we get into, uh, we don't have to get actually get into it now. But did you know it was banned in a, in a lot of countries because like kids started thinking this is real, kind of like Avatar, and then being what like, I'm gonna kill, yeah, idiots. <laughs> And they just wrote names in a book, like nothing happened. I mean, so yeah, yeah. Like, so they, no, they they started selling like the Death Note notebooks, and they're like oh. they're trying to they're trying to like will it to happen, and they're like, what is happening? These are the people that probably thought this was like directed very well, like it was like yeah, you know, probably, probably their, their favorite movie ever, and they're like, I'm gonna go kill somebody with this notebook that I bought at for five dollars at Spencer's. Well, they do say that the pen is mightier than the sword. So there's. Were you thinking about that while watching this movie? I just thought of that right now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
Um, but yeah, I got whiplash, Jonathan. Um, you got an accident? No, no. Watching this movie, um, when I saw my the the movie turn into a uh, PlayStation Two video game graphic with Ryuk. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, what is going on here? <laughs> Uh, did they like lose uh, money for the CGI budget? Like what, what yeah. was the direction that they were doing? Uh, but yeah, granted this movie takes place, you know, filmed in 2005 or six. Uh, so uh, it wasn't that great, but once I settled into it, I, I was okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the whiplash was, was, oh, it, it was sudden, but I was like, okay, okay. I see what they're doing and I'm going to, I'm going to just roll with it. If you go back and watch like the 2001 and three versions of, or not versions, but the first two Harry Potters, you'll have the same reaction. Like what is going on? <laughs> like that, that time period for like CGI was so, so bad. I, when I first watched it, I had more than whiplash. And even now I, I knew it was, I was getting into, but I was like, I think I have to turn this off. Like, <laughs> this is so bad. And then this is where I, I get into like guilty pleasures. I legitimately and like thoroughly enjoy the movies themselves, but I don't, there's not a, I, I thought about this. There's not a single movie or a collection of movies that I can even compare this to that I enjoy. Uh, not for any of the reasons I generally enjoy movies that we talk about, but I actually completely separate, but I'm able to overlook all of the inadequacies of the film and still have fun. And I don't know. I don't think I can find another comparison. Like I, I, there is no comparison because there's no comparison of how shitty. I mean, even, even like, you know how like in the early two thousands, they have the replays of movies where, and then it like zooms in like very quickly. And it's kind of like grayed out to some extent. Uh -huh. Like that's, that's done a lot of times in, in this and I hate it passionately, but for whatever it's worth, it's uh, I don't know. I get into the mode of it being so cheesy over and over and over that I just end up enjoying it. That's pretty much what these two movies do to me. I, no, and I see that. Like, I'm not. I'm not saying that I um, I didn't enjoy these watches. I think for me, I was expecting something completely different, and then what was handed to me and what what I was getting was kind of a complete surprise of what what actually turned out um and then i realized like oh this it, it was based on a an anime um a comic book actually um and that kind of made more sense to me of like the the tone and the direction of it and the the kind of quirkiness of the acting and especially like the character l i did like um like the first half of the movie where l was just a computer voice and we didn't understand who he was or know who he was yeah. or what was going on. Like I thought that was like a really cool concept. Um, and then I like the interplay between like the cat and mouse game, the chess match between L and light. Um, I thought that was done really well as well. It was interesting because I got lost in that chess match because I'm like, wait a sec. Like towards the end of the first movie, rewatching it again. I was like, wait a second. Like now that this movie is like completely just centered on that relationship. And that's what it was in the second one as well, basically where I kind of wanted to watch more murders of like how creative they could get. Uh, but of course, you know, somebody's going to be on your, your tail to uh, if you're killing people like this. Um, with that being said, who, if you had a death note, who's the first person getting written down there? Could you stop showing me that? What is, what is that? It's my is that an note. action? Yeah, just do you have a name in there? No, I haven't written already. Anything down. I haven't written anything down. I'm still, I'm still going over the rules. There's a lot of <laughs> rules that I gotta, gotta learn first. Rule thirteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, who would I? Oh my, I, I, I uh, somebody. Uh, yeah, I don't have the same kind of inclination of like you know somebody evil, somebody bad, somebody uh, that uh, has bad breath. Um, I, I don't know. Wow, bad breath is making the list of people are getting. Getting canned. From I think Earth? down the line. I think down wow. the line. Once you have that power, and you get drunk with that power, <laughs> you just you just willy nilly start writing names. You know what he called? He or she called me Steve and not Stephen. Yep, you're. 
heart attack for you. Anyone want a heart attack? You? You do? Oh, you don't want to bring out the food in time? Okay. Heart attack for you. Nobody's left in the kitchen but me. Good luck in life, Steve. <laughs> oh, Steven. I, I, here's, I, a th- here's the thing. Not many people would be able to kill me because they don't know my full name. They don't know my true identity. Uh, so I, well, I'm kind of safe in that regards. If they give up half their life, which is, you know, part of one of the, the cool rules, if you give up half your life uh, to your to your god of death, then Ryuk would be one of them. Then you could uh, see your name. So that would be easy. There's a, you know, Misa Misa would have, have that rectified in, <laughs> in no time at all. She just keeps giving up half her life, half, quarter of her life, <laughs> half her life. Like, no big deal. Got- I love, I love, again, I, uh. I mean, I admittingly knew this. These two movies would would have this effect on you, um, and I'm glad you you watched them. But I like how there's there's <laughs> I just laugh every single time I see it. Multiple times in both movies, there's like random plot assignments, like data plot assignments that L uses, and like they'll have like dots here and there, and like, well, look at this. It's like it's supposed to look like a mountain, and then the next one is like. But this doesn't. And it's like, da-da! <laughs> it's like, what the fuck am I looking at right now? And how does that justify your point even remotely? We're over yeah. like, what are we talking about here? Yeah. There was there I was love that, that. There was that one scene uh that <laughs> I actually I did like, but I was also like, yeah, this is just kind of to move the plot going forward. But yeah, they had all these like data points of like where the killings were happening and when they were happening and blah, blah, blah. And they just kind of yeah. overlapped it and mashed it up. And then like yeah. within seconds, they're like, well, that's a, that's a college student schedule. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Must yeah, be a yeah. College yeah. student. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love what? that. I love that because everything that was cheesy about it, including the graphics, if you go back and, and look at any anime and including death note anime, it seems it's very up, up what I have seen in anime limited. It's very anime like. Like things just happen randomly. There's a result and you quickly move on because you don't have much time basically to go through the details of it. And that's basically that. Like you have these two movies that are like four hours collectively that it's not the departed. You're not building evidence on somebody. You're not having like a a, a, a mole to to smoke things out from here and there. Um but again, I, I again, I don't know many movies that are this terribly shot in the screenplay. Acted. Yeah, no, the acting was terrific. I thought because it was very <laughs> anime esque. Um, yes, that's true. Um, but how did you, look at the look at the physical variations of the human beings? For example, like Light, he is quintessentially that character. If you've seen the pictures of the anime, but he looks like an anime character, as does L. Not wearing shoes, always wearing white, eating chocolates and all types of sweets throughout, which I, uh, again, fantastic. It's a, such an anime type feature. I loved it. See, I don't know the tropes. I, I don't know the tropes going into uh, what anime is or isn't. Um, I could only mm. I could only guess, but I did like the. Uh, I mean, I've seen you know obviously some anime, so yeah, Light definitely looked like a. He was he basically walked out of an anime, and then L always hunched over and is like you said, constantly eating sweets. I, sure. That, that, that got me. I, I was under, trying to figure out why he was always eating sweets. Cause he never seemed like he had a sugar high. He always seemed kind yeah. of muffled and, but he's very- an anime character. Uh, I like I like the God of death real for, uh, for light, his, his God of death that I like how Japanese anime gave a treat to the god of death an apple it's like we still have to be healthy here yeah it's like they couldn't they like in while lights just chugging along with all types of sweets it seems like they should have done that vice versa he's just eating apples light trying to figure out the case and just crunching an apple or do you think the apple is better for uh for the god of death i interpret it I interpret it more of because I, I grew up in a religious household and I was thinking of the apple of the Garden of Eden and knowledge and uh, the original sin and that kind of idea. I, it probably has nothing to do with that, um, but that's kind of how I interpreted it. <laughs> no, there's a book that he's reading like an hour and 20 minutes into the movie. God, it, it relates to that. Um, 
can't remember the title of the book, but I should have probably written that down. Um, but how did you how did you feel about the gods of death? Um, what do you think yours would have looked like? Oh, m- mine would have looked like more of the jealous god, the guy, the little uh, little kind of piglet kind of gnome that first turned into sand. Um, yeah, yeah. Kind of not not he, he wouldn't be big and you know all all winged out and stuff like that. I I mean I I think they they tried too much to make the the anime the god of death from the anime come into yeah, yeah. the movie like they could have uh they they could have made it their own in a sense um because like i said i was watching um the 2017 one 10 minutes of it yeah and i believe it was william william defoe william defoe was the god of death in that one covered in makeup and everything like that but wow um that had been it, no, no, no CGI, but it was it was definitely definitely different. They actually had originally the gods of death, uh, Ryuk, I should say, that looked too human, and what they had actually done was make them uh, make him look too attractive, and wouldn't didn't want to take away actually from they people like viewed it as the main character Ryuk, uh, the god of death, and they were like, we don't want this to. We were we went we got astray somewhere. And then they changed it to like this completely wild version that you see now, um, which went over quite well uh, with Japanese culture, as you might imagine. Um, and so that's why they did it. I actually enjoyed the thoroughly hilariousness of uh, an interaction between Ryuk and and Light. I thought it was great. A good yeah. companion. Yeah, I thought it was. A, he's, a, he's a good spouse. And, you know, bouncing off horrible ideas on who you want to murder. And he's clearly not on your side, but kind of feels like he is. Uh, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Yeah, he was he was basically guiding him, but like not giving him all the answers and letting him kind yeah. of make his own choices. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, I I liked Ryuk re- a little bit better than uh, Rim was the other one. I mean, yeah, Rim st- stunk. Second, hey, get in, get into both. Yeah, we'll do both. They're one and the same. I think they actually were sh- were shot like concurrently, back to back. Or I might be completely wrong on that. I'm just going to pretend like uh, they were because it feels like they were. Um, I think they were. Yeah, and uh, which would make a lot of sense. But do you think Kiro would help the crime rate? Like ultimately, like do you think it would deter? I was thinking about that, and at the end of the second one, they said like you know crime went down seventy percent, mm-hmm. and. If I was a criminal, like I, I think crime should have gone down a hundred percent. Yeah, at, yeah. At, at any moment, you could just be croaking over, or jumping off a bridge, or getting hit by a truck. Uh, why would you? Why would you risk that by stealing stealing a, a till or robbing a bank or or whatever? Yeah. I mean, people are going to people uh, and do crime, um, but you know if. <laughs> if people are going to people and do crime, you write that down, folks. People are going people. They do crime. Yeah, I, I would be frightened, especially in the manner for which the unanticipated, like, you never know in, in that, I guess in that era, the iPhones didn't exist. So, like, it wouldn't be as frequent as it as it is now. I uh, I also love where people, to try to prevent um, their face from being shown, <laughs> they would wear helmets, but then, like, immediately take it off, like, once a cord had been cut. Yeah, you know, be like, all right, assuming. we can take it off. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's great, but I have to. I have to. Uh, every time I heard Kira, it reminds me of of church. Speaking of church, I used to um, when I was a freshman in college. When I went to I went to to school in Jacksonville, Florida. I remember this girl named Kira. It was the first time I ever met somebody named Kira. She was a white, just an average white girl. And for some, for whatever it's worth, like it sounded like a sexy name. She was a pretty sexy girl too. And I just remember thinking every time I hear this, I'm sure she's like a stripper now. I I was, I was reminded of, of, of Kira, that Kira. I don't remember her last name. Probably shouldn't say it if I did even, but I didn't think of, I just thought of a, a woman that was scantily clad, too scantily clad at church. But have you ever known a Kira? I'm curious. I, I feel like I have, but I can't. No, I can't. I can't definitively say that I knew a person named Kira. Um, it does sound like a, a woman's name, a female's name. Um, 
uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know a Ryuk um, either. Well, <laughs> that, that, uh, that's a different story. Ryuk. I think, uh, if I have another kid, I'm going to name it Ryuk. Sounds like a good God of death name. Um, I like how, you know, Japanese, first of all, as a backstop and Sony loves, loves these movies too, for all, all the reasons I do. Um, okay. and the mind, the mindlessness, uh, surrounded them. Uh, but she, she continually has, has said when we watch Japanese, um, flavored movies that it's the most attractive of, uh, the Asian languages. Do you think so? Japanese is a very, very beautiful language. Um, I had the option when I was a kid, uh, living in Hawaii, uh, there was two, um, two foreign languages that I could take, uh, in middle school. Oh. It was either French or Japanese. Um, my sister was a year ahead of me and she, uh, she decided to take Japanese. And I remember her coming home with her homework and her practicing and, uh, it looked really difficult. So I took French, um, <laughs> I was, it's not gonna not gonna jump in there and try and learn Japanese, but it yeah, it's a very beautiful language. Did you ever think that she was turning Japanese? <laughs> no, um, no, you not don't at really, all. You don't really think so? Uh, not not. Uh, what's the? You're doing a song. That's a song, isn't it? <laughs> I think I'm turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. That's right. That is a song. But thanks for picking up on that. Now, how far would you actually take? like the murders like you got you have the death note like i legitimately as well i'd start just offing all the criminals and then uh what are you left with you're left with somebody who's your dad and he's trying to find you and also you got the power of you know death in your hands by the way as a backstop which would have you know i i would imagine i I don't know how you would feel about this you probably still hate it but like they were gonna have an eraser an eraser where you can take out the names of death note and then everyone comes back to life like nothing ever happened basically and they were like yeah this isn't that that's not a good idea um, no they should and, come back as zombies and make it like a zombie movie that would be pretty cool <laughs> yeah i mean that that seems like it'd be a disastrous that would just you, you you like your zombie flicks clearly um yeah but that would have been weird but like where do you stop you do don't you really st- like do you do but like are you drinking muscle milk by the way yeah, I'm drinking a little. Gotta get my protein in, you know. Get, get your milk. protein on. So, where do you stop, though? Is it people like that just anger you? Like, we, like, I don't know where you'd stop. Would you burn it yourself? Would you have to like destroy it? You think eventually to prevent yourself from going crazy? I mean, you basically start off as like this, as like a noble pursuit, like this noble cause of like being a vigilante, taking the law into your own hands and, and, and murdering all of those that should have been, you know, murdered and, and weren't prosecuted properly or, or whatever, weren't caught. Um, and yeah, you think you're doing this noble thing, but you're basically a vigilante with a pencil. Um, and yeah, I don't know where it stops because once, once you're being hunted, by good people, by the police, by your father, and you have this power, you don't want to, you don't want to give that up. Do you have a favorite snack that he was eating from the lollipops, the chocolates, L, he being L to the, to, the, there was, I mean, there some was of this... it was disgusting. It was like, yeah. I was legitimately like disgusted at some of them. Like we was using a creative when he was using a lollipop to stir. Uh, I think he was making a tea or some sort of drink. I yeah, like he, was, he holds cell phones holding like a cell phone like this. And then when he's talking, he's, he's holding like that. I like the, the character uh, himself. Um, yeah. The physical performance was really great. Um, the, the food oh, that he look was at that. eating. Cut that. We're done. Thanks guys for coming. That's a, that's a wrap. That's our show. Take that as our sound bite. I can say, I can say positive things about this film. Uh, it, 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 just a few, a handful, but um, no L there was like this goo that he was eating that I just was like, what is that? Yeah. Um, some of it. He, and he legitimately was eating it. Yeah. So I wonder if uh, he's missing a leg now from diabetes. Yeah. Favorite, probably my favorite thing was just like his little dark chocolate bars that he was nibbling on. Those were good. Sound, Those were pretty good. The sound was good. Do you think ever uh, in the, in, in the filming of this squeeze on man said squeeze on. Oh, I bet meeting? they asked him to like every time they cut or every, say it. Do it. Squeeze on. Could you? That's pretty good. Could you imagine if like that 
was your your calling card you just constantly have to do it to people on the street i mean you would eventually just start fighting photographers and stuff yeah Come I on, had, say I, it say it say it i, I had this Terrible. one person i had I had this one person that um always thought that i looked like the verizon guy and they always wanted me to say can you hear me now can you hear me now <laughs> was this your no ex girlfriend no <laughs> You no. say it to me while while we're having sex. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> so ridiculous. That's very weird. Wait, this happened more than once with that that person. I, I it's just a memory that was burned into my brain because, like, I I've never. There was only one person that said, "Oh, you you remind me of the Verizon guy," because he was always on TV. He was always on those commercials and things like that. Because he's wearing glasses. I think that's the 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 main <laughs> the main thing right there it's the main feature and i probably had a cell phone that flip phone <laughs> that is so terrible i feel bad for you honestly like if somebody <laughs> were to to antagonize i might get in a fight over that i don't know why that just sounds like it would be very irritating you want me to say what can i can you hear me now why you look like the guy from the verizon commercials what the fuck what are you talking about yeah, like the guy on Verizon. You see him all the time. I know who you're talking about. Like, why do you want me to say this? Like, and then you get there, and it's like, yeah, that is a good point. Why? Why do you want me to say this? And then it's like, what do you do next? What do you? What did you do? I I don't I don't know. I I probably said the line. I'm not a I'm not you know your dancing monkey that will just go on command here. Like, it just. Uh, and then you went and said the line. Yeah, I said the line. Can you say it? Can you hear me now? <laughs> I'm the guy, by the way. I'm the, <laughs> I'm, the guy. I'm, I'm, I'm the person. But anyway. He switched, to, he switched teams. He went to Sprint. Did you know that? I saw that. I wonder how much money um, that switch was. Yeah. I, I don't. Is Sprint T-Mobile now? But not I think so. So anyway, yeah. I, I, I have to, to mention, I really enjoy the writing of in Death Note and Light's handwriting. And so the, the, the way he ends periods really big fan of like the pure the circle Huge uh-huh. fan of that yeah yeah I like that. um i uh i didn't like the pin that um what what's her name uh the the pop star misa 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 misa, misa. she yeah. had a pin that was that she was writing in the death note with that had a little dangle of a hello kitty and it's yeah, just like yeah. how, how could you write with that that seems like very, so annoying very common very, in that time period when I was in Korea, when that came out, like still on cell phones and, and pens, very common. That was like for girls to, to have that extremely common. If you didn't have something, you're a weirdo. But yeah, it's, you know, pragmatically, is it great? No, but you're not a little girl or maybe you are. I don't know. But <laughs> Misa Misa. So what I what I loved about these movies, uh, the collection of them is the end of you know, the L finally shows, shows his face and is eating candies throughout, basically. And Kira, a.k.a. Light, is is giving up his, his uh, or so you think, giving up his, his death note. And another one just happens to uh, fall in the lap of a pop star, Misa Misa, <laughs> who definitely needs to eat, eat like this five million at, cheeseburgers. This happens yeah, at happen- the, yes, she does, at the end of the first one, right? It'll get it a happen- little cliffhanger. <laughs> It happens at the end, end of the first, and then it's reiterated uh, at the the beginning of the the second, and in almost the cheesiest showdown of throughout the entirety of the two movies, I would say. But still, I'm still loving it. But how? Huh? Again, it's it repeats it. You get into this mode of I know this is so terrible, but I, I or at least I did. I got into the mode of like everything is done so poorly. Um. And then you're like, it can't get any worse. And but you get sucked into it. And then at the very end, you're like, it can get worse. Cause not only is there another death note, it's in the hands of this crazy human being that is a pop star and is very different than Kira or Light. Um, what were your thoughts when there was a second death note? Where how excited were you on a scale of one to one million? And um, that it was her. Yeah, so first movie, one death note, right? 
all the antics, L, the cat and mouse game, everything like that. And they're they're thinking, all right, Death Note 2. What could be better? Let's up the ante. <laughs> Let's double it. Let's do two Death Notes, two Gods of Death, and a memory eraser stuff. That's pretty good, right? Pretty excited. Yeah, I'd say uh, half a mil. <laughs> On a, I mean, on that scale, I mean, I was, I was actually elated. I think uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, for whatever <laughs> it's worth, goes so well with these two movies. Does it? Yeah, Does yeah, it? yeah. It makes no sense. That's that's fair. That's fair because um, yeah, the movie ended, and we get blasted with the Red Hot Chili Pepper song. Makes no sense, but it works. Does it? Yeah. I thought I thought I thought it was an excellent reprieve um to to come back to reality kind of thing of like oh yeah you this you know you're not an anime anymore kind of thing you're watching an uh, excellent work of art and now you're able to separate it now you're you know just give me a ni- nice introduction talk about talk about a needle drop in a movie and I mean this is the very end credits of a movie um and you get you get you get red hot chili peppers. Uh, it's fantastic. fantastic. So we get, we get into the yeah we roll into the second movie. It's uh, equally as long, directed by the same guy. At the next year, it's not rated. It's the same everything pretty much. Eighty um, percent of Rotten Tomatoes. Eighty percent, Stephen. That is. How many reviews are there? Wh- for, where are the reviews coming from? Uh, there's a lot of reviews. This was uh, very well received, actually, from uh, critics. Clearly, um, and to mo- like the the the, the audience adores these these two flicks but similar budget similar box office 20 and a 54 did a little better clearly uh on the the coattails of the first movie trying to see how far they can they can squeeze out the the idea of death note but misa misa is in flux now and also the entirety of the second movie basically is is uh the investigation to some extent and his father his being light's father trying to unravel exactly what's happening um, with a serial killer named Kira. So the synopsis, while L still strongly suspects that Light is Kira throughout the entirety of this as well, uh, Light tries to uncover L's real name to kill him, effectively. Confusingly enough, a new rash of murders all around the world are taking place. Misa Misa, the second Kira claiming responsibility. Light turns, uh, learns the identity of the second Kira and suggests they join forces to get rid of L. Pretty simple, right? Uh, will will L be able to catch Kira before he is killed? Time will tell. Um, what? Why? 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 <clears throat> couldn't they have come up with just a different name instead of saying Kira Two? It's like it's like there's uh, there's a place down the street for me called Fa House, and yeah. then like ten blocks over there's Fa House Two, and they're owned by the same people. Um, but like, like you could come up with a different name or or I don't know like why because you already know what Kira is in Kira 2 it makes per- you're not going to name it like Le- Leandro like Martinez like what are you going to like what <laughs> I would like that it has no reference point <laughs> Kira 2 like oh my god and it's like times 2 it's like t- she's killing Kira 2 is killing like crazy like things are just uh, the rationale is not not sticking Kira two mm, times two. This maybe is maybe junior. Good. Could we have done junior? I don't know. Could you have? Um, I had no issues with the the Kira two, um, but yeah, the movie basically is is a compilation. I would say of the chess pieces being moved to and from. Light gets involved with because eventually his uh, girlfriend gets killed. And he in the first one, yeah, draws, but it leads to him wanting to actually be on the the case yeah. to find himself effectively, or and or Kira too, who happens to be Misa Misa, but he uh, he draws up a nice scheme where he actually loses the God of War, God of War, the God of Death's like kind of uh, approval rating, if you will. Like he's like Ryo is like, damn son, you're like pretty violent and he doesn't disagree or agree with him, but he's like, you can clearly see like there's the relationship has, has broken like your soap opera um, and your sister watching. But in the sense, 
<clears throat> he has a sympathetic side where people have uh, sympathy towards him that his girlfriend was just cur- killed, even though he's the culprit. Um, culprit in the eyes of reality, the the eyes of everyone else. He was shot by the dead, dying fiance because she committed suicide of the FBI agent. Very complicated, very detailed uh, screenplay that had to exist to actually plan this out. But I love... I'll get back to the point I was originally going to make. I love how you think it couldn't get any worse from like a just structural standpoint, like Kira 2 uh, or Cheese Factor. And I just completely embrace it again. Because I, I was like, oh, no, I'm I'm in the zone again. Like this is actually so terrible. Misa Misa is the worst little girl ever. And now she's got a death note. This is going to be horrendous. And then I got sucked in again. And I hate myself for it. And I love it. And then I just, I, again, I started loving it again. And then I went to the third one. I even, I'm, I'm you know, glad we didn't watch three. The pilgrimage wouldn't have, it's a one and done. But how did you feel going into the second, Stephen? Uh, I felt not as confused as going to the first. Um, be, in a way that I knew the the tone and the vibe of what I was getting into. but I. Uh, the the first one was a little bit more streamlined and simple um and the second one they just they started putting so many layers and rules and new death notes and when you touch it you see this and when you bury it you do that and then you you have memories of this and you don't like and then we have a news anchor that wants to you know rise up in her world and also she gets a death note like everybody gets a death note i don't I, there was a lot going on in the second one. Not that I couldn't follow it. I could. Um, It just wasn't as streamlined as the first. Yeah. There were three death notes and there were two Kira's and And two gods of death, three gods of death. If you count jealous who died, very, very, uh, very easy to comprehend. I would say the, you know, the, the data plot points were sometimes difficult to understand and confabulate, but, um, I I threw out really felt like I was watching anime. Like the if you if you the again the limited time I have with anime just felt like I was watching actual anime. And I don't know if that was their I, that was clearly their intended goal here. Yeah. But I'd like to see I'd like to see what these characters, these uh very well developed actors, what they're doing now. Cuz I know some of them are still acting. I looked up one recently. And they're um they're still doing it. I don't know if oh, they're yeah? still doing the Death Note thing. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't look them up. But I um, I like. I just like how again in the second movie, the like embedded stories in the back half, like they immediately rectify themselves in like a matter of minutes, or where like L figures something out in his brain. He has, like, you know, he's like reading through papers. I think on the first one, just like going through mm-hmm. data like a computer, like an anime actually would. <laughs> Um, I, I feel like it represents uh, anime very well. I wouldn't consider, though, to counter your point of any Studio Ghibli movies, that you can't compare any of that to this. No, you can't. Uh, There's but... a lot of there are a lot of hardworking individuals on stu- at Studio Ghibli refining the storyline and the screenplay, if you will, and the performance, little characters, if you will, but. There's a lot of effort going in. Not to say there wasn't a lot of effort going in here, but it was in a soap opera type of way. What what I what I think um, this kind of represents is your love the of analog- the film. Yeah, the, the, well, the analog of like how you how you construct and take something that was an anime and and then put it into a movie. And you said, yeah, this feels a lot like an anime, but like so did a lot of like nineties comic book movies, they tried too hard to make it feel and look like a comic book and it didn't really work that well. And I feel like if, if they, if they took this material of, of an anime and just reworked it and to, to, to your point, you might not like it as much or you, you know, I might like it more. I don't know, but like try to fit it into this more of like the, the film real world language of it rather than trying to copy the anime of it 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 might be better i don't i don't know i don't know i don't know i would just like anime then if it's too yeah i don't i don't think so we'll just go and watch the original 
did you you've watched both old boys like how did you feel about the follow-up i don't even remember it um i, I mean the, the, you can't beat the original like the original uh, yeah that's one of the movies that i i heard i mean it's, i haven't done a top 10 list in a while but old boy has always been one not always but like since i've seen it basically and like when it was i don't ever this is the only time i can think of actually not no maybe maybe there are movies but i remember when it got released that somebody was going to be like rehashing the story and i was like no 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 like not i will would i watch this am i gonna buy it yes all of that but i'm like why like why would you redo this it's like a perfect flick like Anyway, I, I'm still I'm still a little angry about it because I mean, it's like, made by Spike Lee, so it wasn't like just some you know journeyman director. Uh, it, sure, somebody... but I feel like anyway. I feel like the idea here. the idea is a lot of a lot of Americans won't won't even like give a, a foreign movie a, a, you know a, a chance. So a lot of a lot of people like, fair. That, that that wouldn't even watch old boy because it's in it's in korean um so yeah let's let's remake it for an american audience and it's a great story see if we can do it justice and they didn't uh, sorry i mean i guess i guess that's one good spin on it but to be fair i think uh sure sure i think i, I don't understand it uh i have a friend i think i've said it on this podcast before i actually saw him last weekend in the city and he is quite unapologetically said, I do not watch any movies with uh, subtitles. Like zero. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's, um, that's just, that's ignorance. Um, it, it's basically. It, so, so I'll, I'll give his point. Okay. His point was that it takes away drastically from his, movie going experience so he's just constantly having to read that was his main problem okay um and to, to that point fair um you know there's there's a lot of people that are are gosh, I, don't... <laughs> I don't do the I... entertain the topic because i i don't i'm in, i'm we're in agreement here but entertain the topic let's do it okay so Supposedly, let's just make a hypothetical. If your friend, yeah. um, uh, through some tragic accident, um, loses his his uh, sense of hearing, does that mean he's just not going to watch any kind of media or or movies or TV? Like, is it just over? If I had to guess, and if he lost it, he would probably make the transition to uh, to reading. Because okay, yeah, yeah. Are you there, saying I should, that. I should take out his eardrums? To well. I <laughs> I don't. I don't know if like in a, like is there like another rule in Death Note where you can just eliminate senses and not like the whole life? <laughs> just that would be hilarious. You know what? You don't like my cooking sense of smell gone. <laughs> gone, bitch. Don't like my chicken wings. Let's see what you're gonna like in the future. You're not gonna like any food. Mm. Good luck tasting whatever. That'd be that. That actually is really frightening. It's way more frightening than this. <laughs> You could take away somebody's sense of smell. Oh, what a horror. People, mm, could you imagine? There's like this, um, I don't know what the category would be called. And we're wrapping up here. I'm basically done. But there's a category of these humans that like get hit in the head, traumatic brain injury, and just uh, like remember can memorize like the weather on that day, but like to a T and anything they look at, basically, it just it's a computer. or Somebody they wake up with a traumatic brain injury and they they speak in a Chinese accent, which like a white a white woman she wakes <laughs> she wakes up from the UK and like starts fluent in Chinese and speaks in a Chinese accent, and it's like what <laughs> what happened? That if you had the power and ability to like change that type of rationale, Oh God, that would be hysterical, and the premise of that movie would be just terrific, like Death Note version of it. Oh man, somebody That'd please be great. make that. Somebody please make that, and and make it just it's dark, dark comedy. Uh, I would, <laughs> I would legitimately love it. Um, 
So please, please do some, something like that. But anyway, what happens? I don't even know. I think it gets a little too convoluted to even repeat this. But basically, Light is found out. And he thinks he's, he's got a checkmate on, on Olel. And L provides his own life um, to justify his position to Light's father, who only agrees after Light um, or L has provided his own life. And then ultimately, everything just fucking unravels. And Light thinks he wins, but he doesn't. Um, and everyone just ends up dying, including Ren. And including... It, basically, everyone just dies. Um, and then Red Hot... Misa, 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 Misa survives. Red Hot Chili Peppers hits the uh, the eardrums. And luckily for us, nobody has put our eardrums into a, a death note. And so we were able to watch and hear one of the greatest movies um, that came out of Japan ever, I think. Yeah, I uh, a lot of times I... Um... I pick out my my outfits for this for podcast for certain reasons, and today was specific because this is kind of what my face was like while watching this uh, these movies. Mm. Happy, You're happy, yeah, happy, yeah. but but a little little dazed, a little confused, yeah. a little perplexed. Yeah, I think you, I think the minimum IQ requirement would be a hundred to watch the movies and understand them. So if you're lower than that, it's difficult. You know? You're 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 misinterpreting yeah. you're misinterpreting yeah. my my. Uh, my idea of days confused and things like that. Um, not confused at the plot. Well, at the, no, I'm, the, I'm, the story I'm, I'm understanding like it. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. understanding. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, some people are challenged in ways. I, yeah. I'm not saying yeah, I'm challenged. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that. I gotta write this down here. Hold on. Sean. <laughs> yeah. and... Sight, sight, hearing <laughs> and taste. <laughs> it's all going. You're going to be, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of sense of humor <laughs> here. <laughs> Something that my co-host uh, is lacking. Um, okay. So do you think nothingness is actually worse than heaven or hell? Because people who actually touch the notebook and use it, there's there's no heaven and hell for you forever. And so do you think nothingness, basically not existing, do you think that is worse? Or would hell be worse? Or would heaven be worse? I don't know. Well, tell me this, Jonathan, um, before, before you, uh, were conceived and, and born into this world, wh- where were you? Not, I mean, this right? is, I, I don't know. I didn't, I, I don't think I had a brain and where okay. was the so conception. That, so I don't not, know. So nothing, nothingness. So you just go back to doing that again. I don't know. I mean, but you're nothing. Would you rather exist? Would, that's like saying, would you rather like commit suicide right now or still exist? Well, what, what's what what's the you're, what's you're, on you're, the other side? What's on the other side? You're taking it away, like nothingness. But you're taking it away. I'm just saying, like, exi- like the fact that you exist is important because you get to understand this this life. And so, I would imagine, as of right now, as a human being, you'd rather and prefer to exist rather than not exist. And so the nothingness is, you know, kind of confuses people. They don't know really what to do. But to me, heaven has always been a weird thing. I guess hell has been too, but like you're constantly happy and constantly just hanging out forever and ever. And no offense to you, but oh man, I don't, I wouldn't want to hang out with you forever nor would I for everyone else. It just seems, I don't know. Nothingness seems like it's, a reasonable approach to life, like the afterlife seems like it's not that bad. You get to kill all these people and take away their senses. And then you get to go to nothingness. Not bad. seems all right. Do you think purgatory is more up your alley? There it's we like go. The... I'm saying purgatory seems like a more, uh, like not reciprocal. Seems like that you would go to even worse hell if you were to use this book and not nothingness. What about, I mean, we're kind of going on a different topic here, but uh, are you a firm believer um, in reincarnation? Is that something that you subscribe to? We've talked about this on we have, yeah, the on what, the dreams afterlife. Make, what dreams may come type of, of things. I, I think there's substantive evidence to suggest that there are some iterations that could be potentially seen as reincarnation through the book Remembering past lives or remembering remembering children's lives i believe it is yeah yeah i remember talking about that and thousands but that doesn't justify if reincarnation exists i mean you're missing like the the connection of the two just because somebody has a memory of that and that memory in fact 
can take you back to physical homes where people lived and their lives. That doesn't mean reincarnation exists. So is there some intimation or, or is there something there to be researched? As I said, the last, when we talked about this, Carl Sagan. Yeah, absolutely. Do I think that reincarnation exists? I have no idea. And I think it's always going to be that with me. I, I don't know. I don't have, I haven't been provided enough evidence to suggest that there's uh, in fact reincarnation simply put, that doesn't really answer your question. Um, nor will it ever probably, cause I don't think we'll ever get smart enough to justify reincarnation and have the science we're backing to do so. But um, do you I think it's more, do you think it's more likely mm-hmm. we do live in a simulation or don't live in a simulation? What are your thoughts on that? I always get to this. I think oftentimes we live in a simulation, but I don't think it matters. It just doesn't matter. I think it is a simulation, but it doesn't matter. It's how we experience it. Yeah. It what, is, is what matters. I think it's, it's always come. It always is that existential crisis kind of for me, like you, yeah, go down the path of trying to figure out if this is a simulation or not, but you're always going to end up in the same thing. Am I just going to kill myself or not? Like to, <laughs> to, to see what's going on. It's like, okay, embrace the simulation, embrace what, what you have in front of you and use your, your gifts and talents and, and work hard every single day, basically or not you know it's like it doesn't make a difference if this is a simulation or if this is not a simulation who cares right end result is the end result you're still here whatever this is and what you think of as existence and i think that that marries well into the the movies we're talking about now which i think are highly intellectually um stimulating and, and and sound and philosophically very hard to grasp but um but ultimately, why don't we get to the ratings themselves? I mean, I'll I'll take you through my ratings, and then we'll go we'll go to yours. Again, I <clears throat> I don't know how else to say it, but they're terrible movies from a <laughs> from, from a uh, structural perspective. Um, but I I think the longest yard was as well, and I think a lot of other movies were too. Uh, but I do have a sentimental side, but I because I really actually do thoroughly enjoy them. Um, were there <laughs> was everything pretty much different than how I would construct a movie pretty much across the board. <laughs> um, pretty much across the board. I, I, I mean, what would be the best of our categories? So we have best performance, quote, score, editing, screenplay, and directing. <sighs> I think I, I'm going <laughs> to, I think the screenplay on both would have to be the best. And that doesn't say that in the, I've rated them the best. And that's because I think it is legitimately a creative fairly creative idea um but across the board everything else is poor um but i don't give it less than 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 a 70 so i gave death note one a 75 and death note two a 74 okay yeah um and that's that's the end of my story (laughs) i uh which puts me puts me at by the way uh there's only been like three movies that are that low (laughs) And that would be Drop Dead Fred, Mortal Kombat, and The Longest Yard. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, it's, try, a good, it's a good form. <laughs> it is a good form. I, um, like, I, like I said, I went into this not knowing anything. Um, I came out of it knowing less. Um, and I will leave you... <laughs> I will leave you or not leave you with a quote, but this is, this is the, the quote that um, just kind of struck my, my interest when watching these two films. Um, <clears throat> Where is it at? Yeah. Misa, 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 Misa says, how could I ever face light? And Ryuk says, face, he likes your face. Yeah. It's good, right? And may, maybe there's some lost in translation things there um, between uh, Japanese and English. I don't know. Yeah. They yeah. did have the red hot chili peppers. So my score was pretty, pretty high with the, uh, the, the score and audio, um, which topped out at 70. Um, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I like Death Note 1 better. Um actually yeah. a lot better uh just because i like the um the introduction to l and light and they're kind of like back and forth um and then i think it got a little bit too convoluted in death note 2 so uh 65.15 for <laughs> death note 1 and 56.85 for death note 2 just because Finally. lisa Misa was was very 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 bad she's like jar jar binks right to some extent like yeah, kind of that, that same feel I'm so thankful that uh, we finally got you to, you know, for the folks out there, um, 
in my own conceptual head, I've been wanting Stephen to kind of open up a little more and be a little more uh, himself, to be honest, and somebody that I know. So uh, maybe this was a purposeful moment to to see what is the potential of, you know, to shit on something. It's kind of fun to to have that, I think, because if we're just going throughout this life and, and enjoying it for what it's worth of the highest capacity and rating 90 score movies, you never really know who's going to be who. You see somebody when they're down and out and you see somebody. So I think I, I remember. I will having... say this. I myself am way more opinionated, I think, as everyone who even watches this probably can uh, attest to. So I myself would have attacked this more aggressive, way more aggressively. You're still nice little old Steven, though. I was hoping I, I would get some like zingers out of you. You were just kind of dead inside. You know? Not dead. No, no. Uh, but I do. I do remember. Dazed and confused. Co- I do remember one conversation I had with you a long, it was a long time ago. It was about movies and it, it kind of stuck with me because uh, you all, you all asked me about a movie that was kind of substantially bad and I spoke good things about it. And you said something like, do you ever not like movie, like a movie or something like that? And it's like, you know, I, I do need to have more of these kind of opinions. I need to have I like a, a little bit of a, a critique on there, but yeah, you, you pulled it out of me a little bit with this. Um, a little, this Death Note. <laughs> this is my lowest wanted, rankings ever. Yeah, I just wanted you to have. Um, I want more of this. I want more opinions. Opinions yeah. are good. Yeah, they're fun. They make for a good uh, time. And, and, uh, as long as I mean, you're a pretty sensitive soul, so I don't want you to get offended by my opinions, Jonathan. I uh, yeah, I don't. I think the one that was shocking that I realized our tastes are vastly different is the clerks um, where you couldn't even appreciate or understand the, the, the backstory. But I, I think it's like you just not liking Kevin Smith and we all have our blinders on. And I think, you know, we each have them and you have, you have your own, but I just want you to be more opinionated. I hope, uh, I hope you can in the future. Yeah, I think I think I can for sure. Um. <laughs> do you think? Do you think? Uh, like, what would you say? Like, the worst movie you've ever seen is besides Death Note. Um, that's a tough one. Because uh, you can always go, you can always go to the the like the the bad movies that you know, um, Plan Nine from Outer Space and things like that. But I don't even want to like consider those because they become like camp classics. Wait a second. Um, you, uh, so many people love that movie. Plan Nine from Outer Space is like regarded as one of the like the worst oh, movies Plan, of all time. Is that the one with the aliens? Right. Yeah, with uh, I think Bella Bella Lugosi and I think Ed Wood was the director, and they you know Tim Burton made a actually a really good movie about Ed Wood called Ed Wood. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a terrible movie. No, I'm thinking of uh, there's another outer space movie that has aliens that is so re- like loved, and I absolutely despise it. But nonetheless, the the premiere pilgrimage. I can't wait to see what what you have in store. I actually very much enjoy bad movies, um, so I'd be interested to see what you. I have. I, uh, I I've already I've already thought it because it has to be. It doesn't have to be a one and two, but it can be a tandem yeah. of two movies that have kind of like a similar. That's right. Whatever. The same theme. That's what this uh, podcast is about. The same theme. Or I don't know could you know we do? This. Could we do like maybe a, a legacy sequel that you haven't seen? Like considering, like you know, I, I know you've seen um, the Hustler and Color of Money, but like you know, something like that. I don't think not I've saying seen those the color two movies. Of money. Oh, you haven't? Wow. I don't think I. <laughs> I don't think I have. Yeah. Well, the Hustler, I don't remember at all. Yeah. That might have to. Well, we'll 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 think about it, or I'll think about it, and kind of let you know. Yeah, I hope. Um, it, yeah, I hope it devolves, though. I hope it. Uh, I wanna. I wanna see the 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 assertive, aggressive, opinionated Stephen. I like it. <laughs> All right. All right. We're gonna get. <laughs> it, this is gonna be um, my my uh, death note to you of a new a new <laughs> cha- a new chapter with rules in it that state that I uh, I have to. Get a little bit more aggressive on my opinions here. You'll see. You'll, you'll see. You'll be surprised. You did. 
You did. No, I, I am uh, I'm pleasantly surprised by your ratings. It's lovely. Not everything gets a, a 90 or an, or uh, an average even score. Nothing, you know, there are there is an ability for, you know, I didn't know we were we could we could go this low, you know, so I I, I felt I felt guilty typing those numbers in. Um, you shouldn't but, feel guilty. Yeah, but I, I could I, I couldn't justify I could to me. I couldn't justify it. Couldn't. Think about it like this. If you if this were a Rotten Tomato or like IMDb type of rating, I mean, they get into the teens. It's not, <laughs> even, true. It's not even it's not even remotely close. So, I mean, if anything, we probably should, you know, change the methodology. What are your thoughts on Rotten Tomato score being 78 and 80 percent for these movies? Uh, I, I, I think there was some kind of bribery going on um, with uh, the critics and they just gave them a, a lot of a lot of dough to, to, to bump it up. Maybe, you know, I, I think of like The Beach, for example, my favorite beach movie. And that, yeah. that was very poorly rated. And I love it. It's another one. I, I've been I've been more going towards the uh, the letterboxed review. Shout out letterboxed uh, and kind of <laughs> getting the, uh, the 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 not so critical consensus, but the populist consensus of uh, and those are typically yeah. more like movie movie lovers rather than just people around tomatoes and clicking. I liked it or I didn't like it. Uh, yeah, of, Francis yeah. Ford Coppola gave his movie uh, five out of five stars recently for Megalopolis. <laughs> But he also uh, gave his other movies uh, fake shitty reviews in a trailer, so you have yeah. that. But anyway, that's uh, that's our week. And hey, what we are? What, uh, we're currently. What, what are, but I was going to kind of look at us, <laughs> podcasters. We're good. We are so tongue tied because we're we're in love with Death Note. So we took away our own sense to be able to talk. Um, so we have a website that's actually going to be launched in the next probably three weeks. It's being worked upon. Um, hopefully we can get some more engagement from you folks. But nonetheless, be on the lookout for that. Where we'll have hopefully a shop where I am going to buy all of our merch and I guess hand it to the people I know. <laughs> but if you want to buy it too, you should. I'm going <laughs> to... You know how like the, the stores, there's some like restaurants. I don't know. You guys probably have great reviews. But like I like the restaurants that get really shitty reviews on Yelp print those off like a barbecue shop or something like that and print off the review, the Yelp review. And then the servers wear that, those shirts. That's a thing. I, I did not yeah, know yeah. that. There's multiple restaurants. And I was like, I love stuff like that. I would like if we got horrible reviews for scene weekly and somebody had like a terrible YouTube comment to make shirts and to be able to print them in our shop that. So if that's how we get engagement, please, I will, I will, I will love to receive it. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, right now we're just sitting on that lock review. Uh, we could we could use a few more. <laughs> and some of them don't even make any sense. Uh, just, yeah, I might yeah. get off the lock. But yeah. But anyway, yeah. what do we have next week? I, I don't know. You tell we're, me. We're still shooting for uh, for recovery movies. Um, I got uh, right. our guest. Uh, I, I, I got him uh, a microphone. Um, so he has that. Mm. He's got a laptop ready to go. We're going to get into... Um, Hopefully next week we're going to get into uh, some films about recovery and uh, see how we recover from that. <laughs> and then we have for you films part four. That's right. Before I'm excited. That. Actually, yes. Uh, scene weekly on all our socials at scene weekly. Uh, <clears throat> you got a coffee mug. E &E. I still need to get a coffee mug. I haven't. I haven't splurged yet. I got you two. I didn't get me one. Are you hinting at the, I? I Return the favor and buy you one. Oh no no no! I already my have it vision's on my, gone. Uh... <laughs> oh god! You can still I can't, type. You I can't can see type. anything. No, I just became blind. <laughs> you must have written in your notebook. All right. Until Same next weekly. week, everybody. Bye bye.